thank everybody who's uh, watching the content and supporting the uh, channel with the uh, kitty cats and also the channel. You guys, I really appreciate you. You are the reasons I keep going with this. Otherwise, I would have called this thing a t thrown in a towel because it's it's more like an 80 to 1 is what I call it. For every, there's 80 things wrong for every one thing right with this damn sub. And I'm being nice calling out the one. I, I can't think of what it is. But the... Uh, um, it's 80 to 1. Somewhere there's a 1. I gotta leave open that thought that something's right on this, on this sub. Okay. So, uh, with that, really appreciate your, your support. And don't forget, if you send support, tell me, uh, to give it to the cats or to the channel or both, combination, whatever you want, so I can make sure to set aside money immediately. What I do is when you, I see the money for the cats, or comment for the cats and money, I then take money cash and I put it uh, in a jar for well, actually put it on like a paper uh, a big old clip uh, for the uh, cat the cat money um, so there you go that and like I said I've, uh, anybody who um, wants uh, money back because I've stared in the wrong way or you, you may not like uh, political views I may have which I'm just a constitutionalist I don't care right down the middle who should be a uh, who should be, uh, president should be the one that's most likely or, or will follow the Constitution. And I'm original Constitutionist guy. Not all these crazy amendments. Um, hyenas, no laughing matters, you see in the background. It's a psychology. Is Hyenas' nature does have a lot of psychology in it. And this, this uh, news or stuff we're getting out there, I told you about it. It's illusory, illusory. Truth effect. Or the illusion of truth effect. You hear it so much, or the, remember I told you about the uh, halo effect. You got to be careful of that, the halo effect. You put a halo on somebody. Uh, young people often get that. Attractive people often, often get the people liking them more so than, say, an ugly person. It's like looking at someone with a snarl, if you will. You don't get the same feeling towards them. Illusion of truth is, in this case, is dealing with um, what the, like this guy, putting the trash out there. And putting it up and people all saying, this is the best, this is the best. They're not knowing what they're looking at, that his uh, he is using it because he's now he's publishing how he's got all these publications. Um, and we know that these these people are getting torn down left and right, the university professors, et cetera. Please put a comment down there who you, who you know that's been now been uh, called a uh, hyena and liar because they're publishing other people's works etc., and altering, making fake studies. This is just crazy what's going on here. All right, so let's jump into the topic here. And again, thank you to the supporters. And tell me how you want me to do the uh, your donation when you do when you do donate, if, you st if you're still going to donate other people. Thank you. Appreciate your support. Okay, so I'll tell you, I had one of these uh, Dr. Ing Ronald's uh, people come into the channel there and started tro trying to troll me. Really? I mean, he's like from Germany or something, isn't he? And the guy was, he came in to try to pretend like he just Joe, Joe nobody. He's German. I mean, it's, it's YouTube. You can, you know, it's, it's crazy. So uh, and I know you were trolling, so then I called you out on it. I trolled him back out, and sure enough, he reveals himself. So let's just be fair, though. You know, I, I, I try to be fair. I spent some time about this finite element program. We have an increment um, time uh, step time over here that we can look at. So he does a few simulations, but the, is, the best simulation is the implosion one, right? First, he puts in all these his calculations, and I'm just going to take a moment because I got to press the uh, step key. If you look over here, you'll see when it changes. Right now, he may be talking, and so that part's left out. But let's go back and just step. So we have symmetry right here. We've got this green. It's all one color. Let's look at the chart. Okay, it's all one of these colors that look about the same, right? Or same, same contrast. And on the other side of this red is this green again. So we got green, a band of red, green, a band of blue down here, and then a gradations of green, I'm sorry, then blue, and then a darker blue. So going to almost no, no end force down here. I'll tell you where I'm going with this. Over here, he's going to show a great end force coming in from the uh, lens, let's call it the lens, and the 
Rush does talk about the lens crushing down three quarters of an inch. I think it's three quarters of an inch, he states. So that, that tells you that, yeah, it's the, the, the focused pressure there. But remember, the lens is also con, uh, convex. It's like that. So equal pressure everywhere on a convex lens should, should help us out. That's what you guys, the lens is convex. And so the force on this is equal everywhere, right? It's going like that. It's on the, there, right? So how much uh, skin friction do we get out of that to, to, to stop it from wanting to push in? And there's a force here. Do we get value for that? Or do we just say it's too slippery? We actually do polish it. Or do we say it's too slippery and you get no value? Pressure down here. That's why you hear me say everywhere from 5,700 to 7,000. I could care less. I don't know what the real pressure is down there. Um, because we don't know what's the density of that water right there. It's got some salt, salinity, and stuff like that. Um, luckily, that same engineer I talked to, he found this chart that showed that pretty much after a thousand feet, and I, he doesn't know how they came up with that answer, that the pressure gets, you get to stack the one cubic inch PSI all the way down to the bottom, that it's maxed out after a thousand foot of depth. So it looks like, uh, so it would look like, in, like that, you're increasing, and then all of a sudden it goes like that. It doesn't, this is the increased scale, if you saw the side of it, that's the way the chart was presented. So this was like... Uh, let's say 15 pounds and then over here it goes higher and it's a thousand feet it maxes out right there at your PSI and then apparently this whole rest of this column all the way down is, this, is the max out it's, it makes sense kind of makes sense um, that it wouldn't compress anymore at that point it's incompressible but before that this is still compressible the salts etc so there is a gradation of pressure and I can't find any Buddy, doing real test on that. I've, I've looked that, way, that you can find it. You don't have to be smarter, just better, lucky, more lucky, and, and resource differently than I do. And hopefully, you do, and you can say, "Yeah, I found your chart. I found what you need." Okay. Those forces there, just on the lens alone, are they? Are th this pressure here is it a clamp force? Since this is between it, is this a squeeze here? We call it a squeeze here. We call it a squeeze here, right? Right, so this shape is shaped, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty dome-like. Let's just say like that. But do we don't know the actual degrees of it, the outside of it? But do we get to get that for free? Do, does it get some squeeze action going on? If it does, that's also a resistance. Resistance here. The end result is that the rush states that it's three-quarter inch. The net end result is it's a three-quarter inch. Um, say this is the subline. It says it pushes in three quarters of an inch. Does it come actually come in three quarters of an inch like that? Does it slip through there? I doubt it because it would have to squeeze. This would because that's narrower down the inside there. It would have to be multi directions. So squeeze. Stay stay where it is. And squeeze down. So the combination of all these forces, my, my, uh, so cancel. This will be my finite element thinking is the combination of all these forces. Get you your three quarter rush calculated three quarter inches. I don't know how he calculated that. If it doesn't or is it just theoretical three quarters of an inch and he doesn't know how much it goes in at all and he's just blowing smoke. I'd probably lean towards the smoke. Now, I know about the lens only being rated for 1,300 PSI. All right? I saw the court documents. You've got to realize that the court documents doesn't say, says that he didn't have a certified lens. All right, not, not, besides that, is this certified, this ring? How about that ring? Is it certified? Did he, did he get them certified? Did he put them together, weld them together? Um, without the caps on them, and then get it dunk tanked and pressure tested. Uh, no, I don't think so. He had them made separately, as far as I understand. So that's that's not it's not certified. Neither end cap. Now I have something uh, a group a group of images I call burst video, burst images, meaning I want to make a video of it for you guys, but it's really not going to be a burst. Um, so looking back at this, so what do you have here? You know, remember this is tapered. So this has to, this would have to, um, so 
something like let's just say something like a, a diamond it's the tapers here there's that taper if you will that's here so this just has to come through there well right up, this is this is the part that probably won't shrink back right right about here and it's wedged in there so the pressure uh, this is my thinking of it is here upon here now it's supported out here it's not supported outside the lens it's outside the casing so he thinks of he's you know a hammer a carpenter sees a hammer and thinks everything's a nail all right and he sees this and sees a shell I see it as a vessel under hydraulic force. Watch this. This is a titanium ring. We know this ring not to be pretty much not deformed um, if we don't count the, the lens as part of it. Okay, so right now you're looking at the gradation. This gradation in here, should they be the same? Not really because the back of this has a big weight on it, right? It's, it's, it's huge weight. Yeah, I know about the counterweight on the back of it, the, the floaty. right foam it helps it float so that's like a that and then we got the skids on it etc he didn't ha he doesn't have the skids on here okay we're, we're going to not give that any rigidity then it takes away no value for the welding um the bolted connections nothing well, let's, let's go here remember the top now he's at 240 and i state this is what i'm showing the pressure is here everywhere but remember, this is also a stirrup system that, I'm going to look at it from the top view now. Let's look at this from the top view. And let's change that color to make it more e No, actually, we'll keep that. Well, you know what this is. That's that scale, so you'll know what, how, what that's about. I want to keep it there. It help you remember that the PSI, at some point, increases until it can no longer uh, um, compress that fluid. So Pascal says that all fluid is incompressible. Well, that's not true. In the fluid, it's the viscosity. You know what's it made of? It's it's compressible. So your blood's compressible, different because of the oxygen content. This ocean has oxygen, and also it's got salts. It's compressible until it's not. And what the one engineer just t sent me was that graph. Looks like that. It looks like about a thousand feet. Don't ask me why. Actually, a thousand feet. I would guess that. I don't like that even number so I don't I don't know how good that graph could be to me it would it's just too convenient all right you know it's like having 666 well that's weird just too convenient um, so if you're looking at this equally you are going to be looking for uh, the defect every material has a natural defect in it I told you that you're just not going to get that that perfect material um, you're going to find that there's a defect there. I mean, in this design for sure, with the, with the tooling, the machine, and carbon fiber making, everything. Epoxy placement, temperature of the day, heating, you know, delays in getting it to the, vat, to the autoclave, all that stuff makes, makes inherent defects. So you need a factor to protect you against inherent defects, a factor that's way higher than what you plan on loading it at. So here's our pressure equal everywhere, and now it's equal everywhere. It's inherently looking for the defect. It's just trying to close in the tube, actually, right here. The vessel is just trying to crumple this down. It just wants to shrink it down, all right? So it shrinks it a little bit, just a little bit. That little bit's not for free. Not for free. That's the, the, the pressure on it. And this is where you would need this to be strong. All this center, what I call the tributary area, right? So let's text that and put a tributary on there. Hmm. So your tributary area. And it's pretty much tributary area everywhere. If you go look for it, I can find your tributary area on bridges everywhere. It's always a tributary area. Tributary area, when you're biting down, I can find it in your crunch, in your teeth. There's a tributary area in my voice talking to you in an audio sound. There's a tributary area. So this is the tributary area from one connection to the next. And our next connection would be the glue interface of the interface ring along with that um, lippage. Now, I don't give any, any value to the top part unless it's stuck on the ceiling there. You know, unless this tube is 
is glued to the ceiling. It's still intact. We don't know that because he rhino linered it and it's not going to be identifiable because the rhino liner covers out to that part. Rhino liner is elastic, so it can't even tell if you're breaking, if you're losing that. He uses a real time monitoring system that tells you about this system. Now, this is where the defect is in, in trying to make this is that they cannot compress this material equal to where it's going to go, say 6,000 psi. Let's just use that number. Up in, on, on, on land here, they can't compress it to that unless they use, I think, a uh, um, uh, expanding inner, uh, I'm sorry, a solid tube inside here and a adjustable outside tube that can compress this to the PSI that can, that can be autoclaved at that point. Say you can do one and a half inches at a time and it can get six, uh, sorry, 9,000 PSI. You want to have a factor in there. And you compress it and you let it lock in. It sets. And then you do the next one. Again, you keep the ring inside there. You do the next one. You Now you're pressing down. You put a, a real-time monitoring system on this now internally. Your real-time monitoring system would be in there because you want to know that it's not crushing your system. It should not be crushing if, you're, uh, if you've got the right inner tube, inner tube supporting there. So, so you should not hear any fracturing from here to here. That's your first set ring. And then you do your next ring and you press it down. Your RTM, real-time monitoring, should not hear any crackling in this layer. You won't be able to tell because you're 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 going to crush the the next layer. You're going to compress it to to the same value, nine thousand. They're they're all going to be the same value. Hmm. I'm just trying to think of the value of uh, adding of upping that between layers. It become more rigid in some places and not. So behave norm altogether. You would um. So you, see, it's not it's not composite at that point. You're not intermixing it. Besides your layer of epoxy here, that if you're doing it in layers like that, your layer of epoxy, your glue becomes your Nelson stud, your your way to tie the concrete to the steel. These Nelson studs. That's how you tie it in. And here we have our Nelson stud would be our surface adhesive coming off of the first roll of the uh, of the um, maybe you could do a. a, a like a, uh, a a bonding agent epoxy and then do your um your uh pre-preg i'm thinking if you just put pre-preg directly on this how much of that pre-preg becomes weak because a lot of it's being sucked into this now dry product here below just like concrete if you will you can't put it on the dry ground and you start pulling your moisture content out same thing with this pre this thing here it's been autoclaved it, you know the behavior of that you need, you need something to, of rejection for something that shows that oh boy this takes a lot of testing this would something that would show that uh, it's going to act in a, in a composite action not actually a bond breaker because you autoclaved it and then you put your next epoxy layer on and you break it now could they do this all in 5 inches I don't think so I looked at these planes left and right that they've been doing the wings and everything else inside Boeing, everything I could find. And they're piecing it together. And then, you know, the joints are autoclaving. The same thing with bicycles, things like that. They're, they're doing halves, and then they put the halves together. If you just try to do the wing with the hollow part and you go to autoclave it, you might cause it to crush and break um, at the edge, at the leading edge, because you're making it, you're trying to, because they're vacuuming it also. You're going to cause it to want to collapse the, uh, to form your shape. So you see what's going on there. So that's that pressure on the outside. This is how I said manufacturing. And then you would have another clamp on the outside that would give you that 9,000 PSI because this has never seen 6,000 PSI up on your land. The autoclave and also vacuuming does not get you your your um, PSI. Autoclaves use saturated steam under pressure of approximately 15 pounds per square inch. You see, we're nowhere there. Now let's look at vacuum. So here's the autoclave, the, uh, how you can pressurize it to get the pressure you need in there. 
but I can't find one where they're doing that six, that 9,000 PSI autoclave. So let me, let me keep hunting. So the Boeing World's, it says world's largest autoclave built for Boeing Dreamliner. And cutting to the chase right here, 150 PSI gauge. All right. And, and there's a temperature. Just 150 PSI. So if that's all it can create, I don't see where you're getting the pressure you need to uh, for it to go down there. That It's going to crack up. I just don't see how you're getting the density. Just like the ocean, it's going to increase as you go down. So I don't see how they're getting the density on this. Now you can try to make more and more and more and more and more layers to try to uh, extrapolate. Getting back to this, so here's our tributary. Let's just let it ride and down. The tributary area again is from, in this case, there's your red, right? And his drawing. And here's a red. So the tributary area is from, is from there to, from red to red. But with your gradation, it's not just, you know, a sharp red like that. Um, trying to bypass a bit. Okay. So the stresses ramp up. If we could look at this sideways, it would be pulling down on that um, ring. The ring, I, I, this graph is not showing that the ring is being compressed and it's turning red because of the compression there. Because the ring is titanium, it'd be more of an issue of this. But the ring is thin out here, so that should have a value. But it's more like ramped up like that. Just like that, you know, and then back up again. So that's the way it profiles like if you saw I showed you with the titanium shell that was um, vessel that was uh, the tube part that was crushed. It looks like that because that you're getting stronger critical shear zone out here than the tributary area. The tributary area is, is on its own. Let me pull just. Let me pull this out of the way for a second. It's on its own, except for it just can't pull down in the middle here. And go pull down in the middle. And like that, because it would put this in shear right next to it. And so I just can't pick a point and go. Oh, it's starting to punch through there, because it's, it's equally pressured everywhere. This is equal everywhere where, when it's down there in the sub, pretty much close to equal, you know, depending on the height. I'm not going to get, theoretically, i got to think of even that, of, you know, the ship being oriented um, on an incline. But right here is where it's now changing. It's so rigid. This is deflecting a bit, and I don't know how much. See if there are deflection over here? But we do know that if you chase it up real fast, the sample shows that if you chase up to 5,000 real quick in PSI, this will have an abrupt failure. You cannot just jump into high pressure real fast. You can slowly work up to it. You just can't drop it on it out of nowhere. All right, so this lens, yeah, the lens wasn't certified, but none of this was certified. None of it was certified besides, besides what the Applied Physics Lab said that we're going to certify it for 4,000. You can see the title of it right here, Titan Implosion, Explosion, Share Failure, Front of Vessel, Sub-Scaled Model, Failed 6,000 PSI Test, two weeks ago, not bad, 38,000 views. All right, so I'm picking it up from this point in the video, 950 in the video, if you want to find it. It's 900 PSI roughly. We need to follow about uh, two minutes of this. Here we go. You're going to hear a speaker in the background talk to this intercom uh, mic. One minute mark. The pressure increased to 4,000. So at 71 minutes, he, uh, he went from that, what you just saw, like 900 PSI, 900 and some change. He kicked it from 70. It was 71 minutes holding stable, apparently. He kicked it to 4,000. And um, and then here's here's the rest of it. Okay, follow this. Seventy-one minutes. He goes from from nine hundred to four thousand. That's like a huge jump. I'm not even sure if that would happen in the ocean. That amount of pressure. If he just threw his shit overboard, could it even make it in this short amount of time? Now you, I didn't give you the time yet, but here it is. How long it takes to go from seventy-one, nine hundred psi. 4,000 pounds per square inch. 
at 72 minutes. So already it's not even into the second minute. And he said bounce it to 5,000. So my guess is it started cracking and failing already. There's a stethoscope. He's listening to it. See him listening to it. My guess is that um, it was, this is my guess, that it was failing. And he's like, oh, you know what? Run that shit up real quick. Let me hear it go. Let me hear what it sounds like when it goes because this test is already trash. Because he didn't make it. Now watch this. So at 72. The pressure was turned up to 5,000 PSI. But three minutes later, at a pressure of 4,285 PSI, representing a depth of about 3,000 meters, the test was aborted. By apparent water intrusion into one of the carbon fiber. Remember to use animation here. <laughs> Instead of showing us the real thing. For domes. This means it failed. All right. But you're seeing what the step is going on, and we might hear a little click in the background. 5,000 PSI. But three minutes later, at a pressure of 42. So right there, a little, a little knot. Some PSI. Right there. That might be it. That might be the failure. Up to 5,000 PSI. But three minutes later, at a pressure. So three minutes later, it fails. Here's the worst part. He's now going to certify it for 4,000. It wasn't even in, in there for, it just, it didn't even make it to 5,000. It failed at 4,285. He's going to, they're going to consider this a certification at 4,000. Pressure of 4,285 PSI, representing a depth of about 3,000 meters. The test was aborted by apparent water intrusion into one of the carbon fiber domes. Yeah, she's open. That is the most risky part of the test and the most uh, difficult to analyze since it's never been done. There's no test data on how carbon fiber in a hemisphere will respond to the pressures. This initial. So I'm trying to see is his cat. Looks like he, the, uh, we see the rendering they show us shows a clear and shiny, shiny. But here they looks like they put that uh, rhino liner on it. All right, let's go to the next one. The test was deemed a success at 4,000 PSI. You understand what they did? They deemed it a success at 4,000. Respond to the pressures. This initial test was deemed a success at 4,000 PSI. They never, they weren't even there. They were still going up. It failed at three minutes in. It never came back to, to, to surface, right? Sur surface atmosphere. And they said, uh, we'll just take away, what is it, 285? We'll just round that down to... Uh, We'll round that down to 4,000. 4,285, see the thumbnail? We'll just go ahead and round that down to 4,000. Call it good, yep. So now who's, this is Applied Physics Lab, University of Washington's video. They clearly can, can control their video narration of this. Is there's, there's their watermark here. But they are saying that. Equivalent of 2,800 meters. As was deemed a success at 4,000 PSI. We'll respond to the pressures. This initial test was deemed a success at 4,000 PSI. Now that's University of Washington Applied Physics Lab stating such. Now they have they come forward and spoken up? No, no, they have not. Um, they've been made quiet. Has, has uh, com uh, Spencer Composite come up to protect itself, saying we had nothing to do with this? No, they have not. And so the court case made it clear that he was going, he said it was uncertified. Right here. At the meeting, Lockridge, that's the, I think he's from uh, Scotland or something, discovered why uh, he had been denied access to the viewpoint information from the engineering department. The viewpoint at the forward... Uh, at the forward of the the viewpoint at the forward of the submersible was only built to built to a certified pressure of 1300 meters although OceanGate intended to take passengers down to depths of 4000 meters Lock Ridge learned that the viewpoint manufacturer would only certify to a depth of 1300 meters due to the experimental design of the viewpoint supplied by OceanGate so of the viewpoint, so of the experimental design of the viewpoint spy, uh, supplied by OceanGate, which was out of the pressure, which was out of the pressure vessel for human occupancy standards, which is out of the pressure vessels 
S2, that's an S, the human occupancy standards. OceanGate refused to pay the manufacturer to build a viewpoint that would meet the required depth of 4,000 meters. That is their, their, their biased position. Um, this thing went down a couple times. I would guess that the guy, the company, didn't want to certify this viewpoint for that because they've never been down there before. And they're like, you know what, we, we know this. This is our wheelhouse. You know, we'll make it. We think we can take care of you because they, they built it, right? The, the people that built this built it. And they didn't build it. They know he was going down to 4,000. And they built it. They didn't say, no, you better not. You didn't see them part of this letter or this complaint saying, yeah, we told them not to do it or whatever. They probably have records to show this thing could probably do 6,000 PSI. They probably pressurized that thing. They would have to do like a jig, I would figure. Um, uh, so basically a mini, a mini uh, submersible with the viewpoint in it and then pressurize the, the, the chamber. So uh, a jig, a tube, close it off, pressurize the chamber to uh, say 9,000 PSI. And the, the lens doesn't crack and they go, ah, you know what, we're good. We're good. He's only going to use it. He's going to use it at four, but we'll certify this at 1300. And he can pay for the 1300. But here's the testing data. And you make of it what you want, but we're not, we're telling you, you we're maxing you out with our certification at 1300. The factor is going to be a lot less. And he says, Yeah, but I saw you test it at 9000. It didn't budge. I'm only going to two thirds that. So. Yeah, I'll I'll take this lens, and I'll take your uh, your tag along of thirteen hundred meters. Gotcha. Check. My, I'm just saying that the, the third party. I can't imagine him being that dumb to actually even supply this, knowing that he's going to take it down to four thousand. That they know that that they. That I can't imagine them being that dumb to say, to to hand it over. You just wouldn't hand. You go wait a minute. It's suicide. We're not going to hand you this. We've tested it. And we can't guarantee you that 6,000. No way. We're not handing it to you. No. We, now we know you're putting it on something that's going to 6,000. Our loss, we're going to sue you for whatever, you know, for, for uh, our, our money and time because we, you're, this would, is going to fail. So I would argue that no, they probably tested it past that point. All right. So we're still looking at a screenshot. And now we don't know exactly how much this compresses down by. All right. But we know that it fails at the edge, per the images, and it fails at the interface ring specifically. So to do that, we do have to have this, this tributary area shrinking down and stressing. So it would be like this. Let's look at that. Like, let me just take an exaggeration. This is, this is being pulled together, all right? So that's being pulled together, and I'm going to add it. So it was like that, but then... The bottom's going down. Now it's ramped up. It's breaking its seal here. When you have that lever on, the lever on to middle the sub. Goop, doop. Look what I'm doing. Look at the bottom ring. Doop, doop. Hitting my bottom ring. I'm breaking away from the top. And I'm hitting the bottom ring. I'm starting to rip it. So deflection here creates that. And it's known that this real-time monitoring system went off like crazy many times. You know, bing, 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 bing. And he's like, well, it's just the Kaiser effect is what his whole state This uh, maximum pressure is a thing called the Kaiser effect. You get a lot of popping and crackling. And the next time you go to that pressure, you should have a lot less. All those weak fibers and voids have all been taken care of. And this all wasn't doing it. So we scrapped it. We went back. We built another one. The first one it will no longer make noise. He, he's exactly right. But it's already damaged. It shouldn't make any noise at all, especially at the higher values where you've already pressure tested it. So in other words, I would guess it would be 150 PSI. You shouldn't, you shouldn't hear any noise under, under 150. Let's get back to, so there's a document there. That's the lawsuit. And it's, so do you think that company made, the, uh, made this knowing he's going to go down there and handed it over and said, here, I'm handing you the 1300. Let's get our money and forget you. And there's a possibility. But this person was not a materials expert. And he hired people that were out of their skill set to do certain things that were out of their skill set. For example, the electrician brags about him handling buoyancy. That's in a private room video. If you want to see that, go over there. All right. 
Here's the world the Dreamliner again. It does 150 psi. So I just don't get it. And it can do the you know the the right temperature settings to try to make it cure. So this is a finite element program. And you can see the red is maximum stress. Red equals maximum stress. And then your color variations change from there. So maximum stress, yep, on his chart too, same thing. All right, let's go ahead and work our way through this real slowly. And let me tap it. And here's our steps down below. And there we go. I can actually just look at the, that steps and know when he transitions. And then as I do that, I look at his numbers change right here. Okay, so now looking at the numbers, I'm going to click one time. We're at 240. Okay, so we added a a a a a, a 102.31 down here total. So we filled out that line that was at zero, and then it jumps to 102. This is beforehand. Yep, so beforehand it's 102.31. Uh, All right, that then that would be that. Just use color rate color, color gradations. That's at the back. It goes from there to none, to zero. There, 102, the cap experience zero, the very back end zero. And then you're, all of a sudden, all these other numbers, all these other values pop up. And they're not much. Look at the left. Look at the scale change. It's down here in hundreds, thousands. Ten thousands. Just looking at my scale going, but checking the other line. Sorry, the ten thousands line. All right, there we are. Uh, yep, not changing. All right. Okay, so now we go, we move on to, there's your scale changing. Now he has the tributary area stressing, but our red values go up. Look to your left. Oh, they don't go up. The red doesn't get any more stressed right here. But it gets elongated down here. Same amount of stress, though. Watch, see, it stays 240, but it's going to elongate down here. Okay. So 240 stays, and it now it's stressing into the past the past the ring, past the ring. It is stressing past the ring, and now it's into the um, door. He has the red, as you would see, is right here. This is the um, two part, if you will, tube part. Interface ring, interface ring. This will come in really critical in the rest of this video. And then past the interface ring here is the door, and here is the end cap, the aft. It, it's, not, it's normally not taken off. It's, it's uh, secured at the back end. This is a door, of course. This is where I'm talking about now. He has this red and... Um, you'll see that that's only the interface ring, not the cap, but you'll see that progress in a moment. Don't ask me how that happened because the ring doesn't show def deformation like that. He's now deforming the ring, and now he's into the door. Okay, so it, first it was it, 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 the higher stress should be um, well, in a ring and also the uh, carbon fiber here, but he's got this stress into the ring itself which is secure the door, past the interface ring, he's going, it extends out. Okay. Look to the far right one, he does the same thing. It goes from here in the, uh, this is the only interface ring, it goes further out. Remember back here, there's that clamp ring. I bet they're using the rear. It goes out and he changes his colors. It goes from this uh, color here that looks like 60. So right there, I'm putting my mouse there. And we click it once, and now it goes to the darker, the darker color. It actually got less stress. So there it's higher. And then it gets less stress on the right end. Looks symmetrical. His failure looks symmetrical there. But, it's, but, it, but the graph shows it's not. He actually has a gradation in this cap different than the gradation in that cap. He knows something we don't know about the cap design, that he knows that this cap design um, sizing and all, well, this cap 
in that cap. Two different two different uh, stresses now. This cap has this this blue right here, which is 40, and over here it's not there. It's just dropped down. It's got less stress on that cap. He put more in here and, and went further out in the ring. The ring somehow, but this failing creates more, makes the ring out here get more, um, which is bolted to the um, door. Somehow I was able to transfer uh, without deflection because this does not, this doesn't show any deflection. It's just uh, more. It just it just magically pushes itself out. Let's go again. Let's keep going. Okay, it went from red to just drop. He went from from 240. So there was a lot of stress right here. And this stress would not be ocean pressure then. This would be the pressure here stressing on it. And all of a sudden he has this collapse. And as soon as it does that, it drops down to 248. Um, looking at the color gradations. 177? Even 142? On both of them. And he lost all his, immediately released the pressure from here. So it, re it was spring load, it was pulling, and then it released it. So this has an effect of setting this that way and that one that way because it, just, it was just pulling on it, and he just released it. It's like a rubber band. He went from here, pulling on it, a pulling stress, as this is tributary area pulling down, to which is 240 to the value percentage-wise, if we think of it that way. He just dropped it over 100, 100%. Let's see, it went down to 177. Wow. Yeah, it would be uh, twofold. Let's do folds. Twofold that number. Um, well, more than twofold that number. So the uh, it just released. And going back again, this is that gradation right here, it's like 180. Now watch how all of a sudden his, his finite element program decides to give it. It releases, but it picks on that spot right there. It just increases the... It went through the past the ring, and right there, it's now loading the outer of the, of the dome. It's loading out here. Not back here. They're not acting as the same. Remember, there's a floor inside here also. There's also a tank inside here. He didn't. He can't add those because he doesn't know what size they are. He doesn't know what the floor is made of but he has it crushing in here and yet there's a floor here there's a rib floor here so this is why i say it's just all his whole thing is just about it's a hyena just coming out to try to get subscribers <laughs> to beef himself up but this is his publication he's published it all right and this counts and so it's fair it's fair to critique so um, we, we go forward. I'm at 30, 34, 90, 34, 917, 914. Yeah, and my brain does that. So you guys, um, correct me if I say left and right, right is left. That's a little bit of my, uh, my own issue. So I'm going forward. I have to say no. It's going forward. So now let's go back again. Okay, so there's that red. Now this is in the dome now. It's going to expand the red out out of nowhere. This is crushing down, so the force is increasing here, trying to close this up. This is the uh, out water pressure outside. Obviously, the water pressure is not buckling. You don't see it peeling back or anything else. And I show you carbon fiber is different. It wants to peel back like a banana. Not in his case. It just goes that direction. And here we go. From there, we just jump on red. That the... What appears the door flange lights up red. All of a sudden just lights up red, not that end. That end does not. This is still nothing. No no forces, but we're at we're at the reddest red you can get, and then the gradations down to here. And then here does it have yellow in there? Yep, there's the yellow. All the way down to well the blue. Oh he picks the whole it runs the whole gambit. So the pressure, the highest pressure per his finite element program, no longer on the ring. It would bypass, this pressure wave bypassed the ring, just on the dome. That's magical because it's bolted together. It 
same thing down here. This goes down, but it actually looks like it's deforming his ring. Notches in the ring. Fractures in the ring? Yeah, okay. There are a bunch of fractures. Okay, I'm at 1025. Yeah, they're none there. And then all of a sudden, they, they appear. So there are no fractures in this ring. And all of a sudden, his ring gets fractures in it. All a bunch of little fractures, which doesn't, the evidence doesn't support that. The evidence doesn't show all these, these fractures here. Here's the front ring. I got a couple of images of this loaded up here. And there's, there doesn't support the fractures as he makes the ring disappear. This is the ring, the interface ring. He makes fracture away in just a moment. One, two, three. So this is again a hyena. The hyenas come out, you know, and they try to steal other people's prey, other animals' prey and everything else. <laughs> This is what it looks like with hyenas stealing other people's prey. Listen to it in the background. I'm only going to take about 30 seconds of it, but it's it's worthy of uh, the analogy of uh, what people would do uh, out here. <laughs> And I do have permission from this guy to publish this. <laughs> Hear him laughing. <laughs> we stole your stuff. <laughs> and it's a bunch of hyenas on YouTube here, all trying to just you know just put junk out. And just to promote their channel. And he, this is the, the, what I call hyenas, you know, the hyena method, the psychology of it. And so now this doesn't even support the evidence. This is not supported by the evidence of the ring coming up in a bunch of pieces like this. Chunk's missing. But he's, he's doctoring. He can't see that. I mean, he doesn't care, rather, because he can't see it or he's ignorant because he only knows about shell buckling. And so this must be true because I spent the money for this program. And so me, the Kai, he's the jerk for not accepting this as a matter of fact. That these rings now, oh, now that you spotted them, meaning me, oh, I can change it. Um, you don't understand. It's just uh, uh, this or that. No, no, you published it as this is the way it looks like. We go forward and you, and you didn't even debunk yourself saying that, hey, uh, this doesn't make sense. Here we go. Let's go forward. Because he doesn't have the knowledge to make to, to understand that it doesn't make sense. He really, as a hyena, believes that this program is, is telling him how it behaved as he publishes with the people. Or he doesn't care. He's a narcissist. <laughs> okay. So, anything that gets views. Like, like uh, Ostroff, right? Just anything to get views. You know, I'll republishing other people's stuff left and right. Like I think he put this on his channel too. Republishing other people's work. That that's uh that's that without without you know critiquing like this. This that's uh or or you know it's just hyena hyena stuff. So we watch this down in the middle now. It just watch the gradation. Let's put this mouse right here. I'm going backwards. Just bear with it. Okay. So there's the mouse right at the inside of the ring. You see the little black line it's, it's on? And then his next deformation is going to happen now. And it's still there. It's still on the ring. See? Nothing changed. But yet this tube, and so the, the ends stay where they are. The ends stay where they are. The coloration changes. And his inner ring deforms now. Let's go here. To the outer one and it steps down just a hair and this is where all the fractures all of a sudden just just magically all pop up uniformly mind you uniformly all right so we go forward let's give ourselves an indicator okay indicator just so we can have a know if, if it moves so we're at um, 3605 on the steps on the increments as you may see here Put back the indicator anywhere I want. Let's just put it there. Mm, right on this side. Yeah, need to put it on something we can observe right there. All right, so we're at 3605 on the steps. Okay. Now 
Now the ring has gotten smaller. And yet we know this ring is ripped off. The interface ring is ripped off. And he has it now shrinking, getting smaller. Okay, now we see the red increase here. His pressure wave, if you will, is now more red here, the max. Again, nothing on this uh, the bolted connection on the interface ring here. This is all on the end cap and nothing on this end cap. This is just like gravy down here. It's nothing, right? So let's go. Okay. He's saying the implosion now. Listen. Explodes. Let's, and then you have all kinds of debris flying let's, He the says it. And then the cylinder basically implodes. He said basically it implodes. Listen. No, basically implodes. Okay. So you heard his own voice in that. Now let's go back. Let's go back to... All right. So you see a colored gradation. So now you've got this pressure wave. I guess the since it's showing, uh, you know, this pressure is not from outside. This is internal pressure pushing out. This is so damn uniform. Yet... This has gotten away from his pressure wave, but yet there's still fraction going on and overlapping now of the metals. The uh, deformation of the uh, rear has folded in. All these, all these breaks have developed, like I said, and over here also. And yet, the, the, he published after the evidence came out of the water. And the evidence clearly shows the rings are not all fractured into multiple pieces as he's showing in his finite element program. And he had full access to this data, just like everyone else. So he's full of it. But he couldn't put it together. Or he did, and like I said, it's just hyena moves that just to promote his channel. <laughs> and I just find this, uh, you know, an attack on intelligence. So now the water is now crushing this, in rush, crushing this, this carbon fiber that has some resistance. But do you see it? No, it's very low to him. It's just very minimum pressure. And this is still. It, this has still got all this pressure out here. There, what, what's, what's helping keep that pressure in there? What's increasing it like that? All right, so the end, the right cap is just staying like it is pretty much. Here's our pressure wave. Now we get a reduction. All right, so now we're losing that power. So let's, let's go back. So now that force, it, was it going in there? It's now going away. And this is just now all blue, so it's got no nothing on it. It's just all of a sudden become... Staying where it is, and it's, yeah, it's a zero right there. The whole back end cap is a zero, and it weighs 3,000 plus the rear plays so much, this should now start falling down, right? Nope, it waits. The time, 38 increments, 38, 188. It just waits for the end cap to come, this other end cap to come towards it. Okay, so now this is totally still crushing and breaking apart. Now our... Our, uh, our pressure now is disintegrating, if you will, dissipating off here. And this is blue. Um, this is a, um, a light blue of 70.81. Yeah, I'd go with that. And then this is a um, yeah, 106. But this isn't outside, this was inside a second ago, all that pressure wave before the collapse, this was all built up there, so now it's releasing. So it, it was inside external pressure creating that. Now all of a sudden, magically, he's going to now have this force coming this way. Just all of a sudden now, now we watch it. I'm trying to change the gradation. Okay, so there's somehow there's more pressure being built up inside. It's got to be inside. If this is outside, it would be out here also. So it's built up inside over here. just made more pressure. That pressure was only built up inside. It was going that direction. It was pushing away, squeezing it away. Now all of a sudden, this is with no new pressure created out here, like a, a red out here. It would push it towards there. This is dissipating, but moving around. For some reason, it's just changing its position uh, on this perfectly um oh wait a minute you did you missed this part i let it slip right past and didn't even catch, let you catch it hold on tick 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 wait for it wait for it you see the implosion oh, what's this oh that's the whole entire ring the interface ring folding in on itself 
So he has this ring just crumbling and disappearing, and yet the evidence that came out of water shows it not crumbling and disappearing. This is the interface ring that we saw come out of the ocean. Right there, the interface ring come out of the ocean. It's now folded in on itself and disappeared. Isn't that amazing? And this is Dr. Ron Ng. You gotta be shitting me. And this is why you see I do the, the attack videos, if you will, because it's an attack on intelligence to watch this crap. And I'm busting my ass out here trying to give you good information. This ring too. See the interface ring here? And he publishes it. Now this ring dissipates, fails, crush, disintegrates, fractures all apart, along with this one. And all that's left are the two, the one end and that end, and it comes flying towards each other. This one comes flying towards that one, even though the pressure was going out. So you, you can see how these hyenas <laughs> come out and they just irritate me. And they, they just win the hyena award, you know, the, the jackass award. That's just folding in. So all the pressure was folding this debris in, but it still keeps the cap the same. There is no red, increase in red out here or anything else. So this is just crap. Oh, wait a minute. Look, there's a red developing there. That red developing there is now taking on debris, whatever it is. I don't know, but it magically goes through there, through that hole, comes out the other side. There's some red here. Now that would create a torque since there's red here, a high value red. It just popped up in there. It'd want to start pushing this against the water pressure around it, since considering all the water pressures equal, and we're looking at an equal environment. Any pushing or pulling of colors like that would create a, a force that way. It would start wanting to spin this and push it off the, away from it. This one looks like some red dots here. It wouldn't want to go that way, I guess. There's a computer and everything else back here, but it doesn't matter. And a dead weight doesn't matter. This he has just waiting there, waiting for impact. He already disintegrated the interface ring, both of them, and now it's just the end caps. They come smashing into each other. Wait a minute, wait, wait in, yeah. So this is what you got. You have all kind of debris flying around. Yeah, and it waited for it, and it meshed up with it, and and as we know, they pulled both of these up together like that. Look, he made the spear. Uh, I'm being facetious. This is just, this is just nasty. Oh, help me. Finally doing, doing a proper finite stress analysis. Was waiting forever for this. Thank you. The failure mode looks most realistic out of them all. This guy's a, a asshat, a clown. But he's made it, but he's now. <laughs> this is not a proper finite element program. Thank you. And so he answers back to whom? This is science math nerd one. Can you enlighten us why not, Mr. Or Mrs. F finite element specialist? Oh, see, he's a little triggered little bitch, isn't he? This model may not be the best possible, probably because I have not access to the original materials, geometry, data. But, but, but the but, it's a good enough for a rough estimate what might have happened. Yeah, you destroyed the interface rings. It is not a might have happened. So I'll end it with... You know, just because someone says they're a PhD or a PhD doesn't mean they know what the hell they're doing in the real world. This guy does a model. The evidence is out there. He disintegrates part of the model, the evidence in his model, and says this is what might have happened. It's just not logical, but logical to hyenas. Just taking other people's food and things like that. They're just promoting the channels. They have, these are, they're just narcissistic people. If, or he's just dumb as shit and somebody gave him a PhD.